Okay, so this morning I am going to be installing a new door latch uh, on my D-Liner Ranger 12. It's a 2016 model and uh, Miss Rigby's out here helping me. Rigby, you want to say hello? Okay. Um, anyway, so, I, you know, I'm at least the second owner. Um, and every, ever since, I got it almost two years ago, and um, this is the original um, door latch. And it has, uh, when I bought it, the this is, uh, the, you know, these styles have two locks on it. This is the um, deadbolt, and it is, I think somebody, whoever had it broke their key off anyway. It just never worked, and it doesn't turn from the inside either. But also, um, sporadically, this thing just, um, the, um, the door latch part, you know, the hits the jam. Um, sometimes it would open, sometimes it wouldn't. Sometimes it uh, stays um, retracted and I can't close the door. And it usually seems to happen, you know, at two o'clock in the morning when I had to go outside for the necessities of life and uh, you know, I get back in there and it's cold and I can't get the door locked so anyway so uh, and I've tried breezing it and you know, putting a, you know, spraying oil down there and everything and nothing ever seems to work so we're going to replace it with the latchet um, RV door lock and these are touted as being you know, it's American made even though you know probably American assembled but it's all metal it's around 40 41 dollars on Amazon um, fits this little booger it's black but you know whatever um, the original is, is silver anyway so I'm going to shortly um, I'm just gonna do a partial raise on the roof and stick a probably a bucket up under there to keep it up so I can open and close the door and I will be back with you shortly. Okay, so um, here I've got the roof raised a little bit so I can open the door. And uh, we're going to uh, be removing the back plate, the screw on, and the silk plate. So I have the, um, you know, the roof is raised up on a, it's got a bucket stuck in there just to hold it so I can lift the door, may open the door. And anyway, we're going to just be, you know, unscrewing these four screws and the jam plate and, uh, it should be fairly simple. Of course, I haven't read the directions because I think it's a guy thing but I'm pretty good at figuring things out anyway I'm gonna try to get the camera mounted and uh, don't really have a tripod and I will be back in just a moment and just go through the procedure I do not know if I need to put a new sill plate the, there is one in the box from the latchet um, might just replace that for um, because it's there and it's new. Uh, this one's okay, it's not like worn out. Um, you can see where the old latch would rub here on the door, um, but replacing the plate's not going to hurt or help that. Anyway, I'll be back. All right, so we're going to be just unscrewing these. And um, go from there. Now, what I liked about the latchet, it does come with multiple size um, screws um, for the two for the outer and inner plate. And what it, you know, I'm hoping that they have a screw because I haven't looked yet. I haven't taken these screws out. 
I'm hoping I have the screw that will fit this, um, you know, the width of the eight-liner Astell. I'm actually looking at this. It looks like the um, previous owner has had these screws off before because some, some of the heads are a little stripped. So maybe they've been having trouble with this the whole time. Ah, more screws. just comes off. Not a whole lot to it. This one's all metal. Looks like all metal too, so hope this wasn't a latchet. <laughs> uh, made in China. There's a shock. Alright, so we're gonna take the jam plate off. And then if it's like when uh, like I've worked on you know, locks, door, door latches in, in my house. And usually you have to pull this out so that you can get the plates off. Just save, save the screws just in case. If you can see it. And it's just kind of um, pulling it away, you know, away from the door, and it just comes off. Um, this one is all metal, so glory be. And you know, whoever put it in, you know, will do the same. Got some silicone in there. Anyway, I'm gonna put that down. to clean uh, some of the silicone off and then grab the camera real quick. So this is on the other side and I'm gonna get a little scraper. Maybe some, uh, got some gunk off. Hopefully it won't hurt this stuff. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna get this stuff off. So I've just got a little paint scraping tool that has been used all over my house and we're just gonna try to see what this does looks like it looks like it's coming right off so maybe it won't have to get a cleaner out here and get a few rags. Just get that as clean as I can. I'm sure that if I don't, I'll be in some torrential downpour and water will somehow manage to get under there. But as you can see on the um, on A-liners at least this uh, this series you know, there's, that's the Asdell wall sandwiched between, you know, some kind of, you know, some foam. And then we got another, um, oops. Uh, we got another, you know, wall here. I think I read on the new Evolution, you know, the $50,000 things, which I'd love to have, but... I have too much, too much Scottish blood in me. I'm not going to spend that much on a camper. And my Ranger 12 suits me just fine. Um, anyway, I'm going to go get a, uh, some cleaner and a rag, and I will be back. All right, so we're just using uh, 409. That's all, that's all I have. Everything else is in the, in the office. I sprayed some on there and let it um, 
so for a moment. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> a little bit more. And I'm not going to be too particular. This is the, um, the new latchet. Um, has a new rubber gasket that goes around this hole. I'm pretty sure by the time I screw it down it will be on. Um, put some silicone on it. Everything will be just fine. But this is, you know, for one my finger. It's just for, you know, I can, I can feel the glue but it's nothing. It's not like sticking up really high. I'll spray a little bit more. Hold on. I can't do that and hold the camera. Oh, well, maybe I can. Mm. This one, one way to clean it. <laughs> when I left my last uh, camp of the winter, um, in the middle of uh, November, and I packed it up. When I got home, it was, it was the weekend of Hurricane Ian down here in South Carolina. And um, it was so cold when I got home. But actually, when I left the campsite, I had it, I pulled out everything and that I needed, you know, clothes and food and whatnot. And just uh, packed it up in the car. And I have not opened this up since I've gotten back last month. Um, I cleaned the inside. Did not wash the outside. Wash the outside. It was too cold. I'll get to that some warm winter weekend. Anyway, that looks pretty good. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna mount the uh, camera again and um, put the new latch in. I guess I should have an unboxing <laughs> I think those videos on YouTube are silly about that, but that's just me. Anyway, it's the RV door latch. It is the, um, I forgot what the size was. I had measured it before I purchased it. Um, there's nothing on the box, but anyway. You know, it comes with a QR code so you can your personal information to whoever and an uh, insulation guide. I have not looked at this, heaven forbid. This is the new latch and the screws. And it comes with it, uh, comes with four keys. These in the oh, and the latchet. So these are a um, they promise that. These are individual keys. There, there's not a, like a universal key. Um, I'm sure that some of y'all know that the keys we have, almost all RVs, are the same, and uh, anybody with that key can do it. So these are individually coded. You can't even call the manufacturer and ask for a replacement, but they send you four. And I personally. Um, because I'm uh, can be forgetful. <laughs> I keep um, I have two I have two key rings. I have one I keep in my pocket and it stays in the house. And I have another that I keep in the um, center console of my car. Um, because if I didn't, I would have locked myself out. And it happened one time. I locked my keys inside here and. Um, Fortunately, my car was unlocked and I, I got right back in. Anyway, I want to get these things out of the bag and I'll be right back. Alright, we're back. I got it out of the bag. It is screwed together, so I got to get these four screws off. 
it's just like um, when I took it off that was the a liner door um, just remove those four and this should just slide back in now you can see the uh, it comes with a new gasket and we'll go around the outside and keep the water out and I will also have a my trusty tube of silicone I'll put a bead around that when I'm done anyway, let me get this unscrewed and I'll be back and it, it, it is all metal just like the old one all right, so I've removed the back plate. And something I'm going to do real quick. Just like I said, the um, the uh, latch it comes with multiple size screws. So this is my old one that I removed, and obviously the easiest thing to do is match it up. This is these black ones were the ones I just took off this back plate. So I've got to dig through this bag of bolts and we're going to find the screws that are the same length as the um, as the original. And I'll be back. So I've got my bag undone. That's my original. And let's see what fits this. same height which means when we, when we mount these two they will um, it will um, be the same width as the as this hole I'm not width but you know depth I guess all right so I'm gonna find four of these one two this is going to be just as easy as taking the old one out and just sliding it into the pre-drilled holes. I hope this works. <laughs> I'm going to look awful silly for that. Look at that. Hmm. Might be time for the instruction book. wonder if I have to take the silver back plate off. Um, I don't know. Try again. So what's happening? Getting in the hole. And this is that's obviously the correct um, size. But I can't get the angle into that. If we look at the old one, where do I put it? Um, leave a comment if you see it. <laughs> I'll be back when we find the old one. It was untied. Alright, so that's the old one. This is the new one. Said the exact same size, but that's a Y. Actually, that looks horribly similar. Um, I'm either having a brain fart, which happens all the time at my age. So, this one just hmm, 
It's hard for video shaking him. So I had to push it a little bit. Right, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna grab the other one. I was scared of bending or cracking the, the ASDO. Try it again. Ah, okay. <laughs> It locked the door. <laughs> that was kind of funny to me. Right, so I've, uh, I got a, a two-hander. I'm gonna put the phone down. All right. Use two hands, Bob. So it's a little, this thing is not sitting flush. I'm going to grab these, oh, the new keys. I don't know if that. Something is. Um, on this side of the door, this is not sitting flush, so I gotta figure that out. Show you what I'm seeing over here. Um, so I've got it slid in. It is not. You know, it's, it's flush on the back, on the towards the front of the trailer, but it is not pushing in far enough. This 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 whole thing is supposed to sit flush against. The side of the um, door. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the camera down, see if I can figure out what's going on. And when I do, I'll be back and show you whatever I figured out. I might need a flashlight because I'm up under the house tonight. I mean today. <laughs> it's dark right where, you know, where I need to see. Anyway, we'll figure this out. And I'll, I'll be back and show you what ever was the matter. I had a uh, right idea. Doesn't happen too often. Anyway, so what I did, and um, uh, Lord, I'm glad this okay. So this was around here. This was on the old, this is the old latch up here. And it came right off. And when I look at these, the you know the original also had a black, you know, some kind of rubber gasket, just like the new one. The new one's a little bit thicker, but this one might have been compressed. Anyway, I'm just I'm gonna move this over to here. I gotta clean it up first because um, it's loaded. It's also loaded with silicone, and. Um, from what I can tell, um, you know, when, when uh, A-Liner, you know, Joe the gasket guy at A-Liner put this on, he, he you know, that there, it was obviously this, this gray um, gunk, which is still tacky, was um, up against this um, the old seal. Some of, some of that stuff right there. Um, 
so he had uh, well, good one sheet. Um, anyway, he had he had sealed that down, I believe. Anyway, I'm gonna clean this whole thing, which, like I said, is perfectly perfectly good. Um, I'm gonna clean, try to clean it up a little bit. I might have to apply a bead around here. Uh, uh, redo what Joe the Seal guy. Anyway, I'll be back. All right, I'm just doing a little progress video. So I took my little um, scraper and scraped this off, the inside of this. Now one thing that has me worried is that this is not the clear or white silicone that's on everything else on this camper, the, the factory applied um, sealant. I'm a little worried about that. I'm gonna, um, all I have is a tube of the, the, the white silicone stuff, you know, the kitchen bath stuff. And this is thick, it's, it's like really thick. It's almost it's sticky, but it's, it's rubbery, but it is definitely not. Um, now this is what's on every, every part of this trailer, this, this, this bead that runs around. It still holds, That's, this is the original bead, and I'm, I'm leaving that alone. So that's, and I don't even know what this is. I think I've seen it before, but what I don't, what I don't know is, is there a reason they use this instead of the um, the other material that's on the rest of the camp? And, you know, like everywhere. Um, I think we'll be okay. And if you know, I'm, I'm going to put the white silicone on the. Um, Uh, you know, and keep an eye on it. And if, if I do have trouble, I think um, it's obviously now that I know how to get this thing off and what I have to do. You know, this you know this video is taking much longer than it would have um, if I was just out here not trying to explain my steps. Um, but I can get that latch off very very easily, so I'm not worried about that. And you know, just keep an eye on it. And actually, I'm, I'm trying to avoid going to, to the hardware store. Um, just some general principles. See if I can actually do a project without going to the hardware store. What do you think, Riggs? He's, okay, still thinking. All right. I'm going to clean up this. And um, I'll be back and we'll hopefully have a bead going around of just the white stuff. We'll be back. Semi cleaned up. Um, I'll explain a couple things. Um, so the gas, the uh, that gray stuff was on this side, the side with the little hole things, whatever those are, impressions. Those holes went all the way through. But the you know, as it was originally assembled, the holes with the sealant went here, towards the trailer, I mean, towards the um, outside of the camper. And so I'm gonna put out my silicone right there and just run a bead there. And then once I get this all assembled, I am going to run, you know, when I get the plate screwed together, and, you know, this thing's gonna be there, I'm going to run another seal around here. Um, and if it leaks after that, you know, I'll figure it out then. It'll probably be years from now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look back on this video to see what I do. Um, and just, you know, I was just talking about seals a minute ago. Everybody talks about the, um, the COVID campers, whatever. Um, now, this is a 2016. It was obviously a long before we knew we were diving into a pandemic. Um, 
you know, the seals on this thing have been pretty, pretty darn good. Um, the, the originals, um, I'll go around and dab some stuff somewhere. I had a leak this past, uh, my last camping trip. Again, it was the middle of a hurricane in. I was with a torrential downpour going from here over to the uh, state line with Georgia. And um, I did have a leak, you know, in this front section of the camper. I believe um, because I knew it was going to be raining on my travel day and I had already I hooked it up to the car. And uh, I actually needed a higher hitch because it, it's down uh, the front. Well, this, this is hooked to my car. Uh, this is about two or three inches lower towards the car. And I, need, I just need to get a higher hitch. Um, and I believe the water just drained down, you know, when I was sitting out in the yard before I left, I think it drained towards the front. Because I, I, that was the first leak I've ever had on this thing. Ever. Um, and I've been through uh, very heavy rainstorms. Anyway, let me get the silicone on and I'll be back. So the silicone I use is it's just GE Advanced Silicone kitchen and bath projects and um, I had read on some I'm sure one of the Facebook pages that the, the kitchen and bath was perfectly fine anyway that's what I'm going to be applying and um, my work table was taken up by a, it's one of the COVID projects <laughs> never finished I found this uh, um, canoe on the side of the road and threw it in, in the back of the car and it needs uh Use it so braces and everything else reassembled and never happened. So it takes up my workbench, but we will do our best. All right, here's my badly applied silicone. Uh, I was having a little trouble with the tubes. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take this in and get it on the door. Here goes nothing. Let's see how big of a mess I can make. Got the plate on. Got my silicone all over the place. Let's put some out of there. Look at that. Uh, can I see that bead running around? Anyway, we'll, we're gonna, we're gonna get this thing screwed on. And come back, make that look much nicer. Cleaned up a little bit. And I think we'll be done. Well, actually, I haven't looked, even looked at the silk plate yet. Let me get the other side on, which is not, this, this side is not silicone, so I um, got a good seat on the outside, we should be good. I'm gonna put the camera back real quick. All right, so I got my four screws and uh, put my plate on. Hmm. Sorry, I'm going to brain part there. <laughs> All right, so this is the um, deadbolt side. We're going to get that that orange hole lined up with this. That's the deadbolt. Um, Got a little half moon thing going on. So I'm rotating it, hopefully. Okay. Hmm, doesn't line up. <laughs> so, give me a second. Four 
Let's put anything down. I have a working deadbolt. Never had one. I don't think it really matters because these are um, It's not like an A-liner or any campers that lean hard. But, break into. And again, these are the same, you know, we measured the screws. And these are the same length as what came off. I have not tightened them up. Oops. Yep. I dropped the screw inside of my shoe. It takes special skill to do that. Four. And still have a working uh, deadbolt. Before I put the, I have not put the uh, sill plate back on. Um, right here, I'm just gonna check this thing actually works. Hey, look at there. Holds the door. It's magic. Alright. Um, oops. Pretty sure these two flathead screws are what holds in the um, the sill plate. What I don't know is there are two ways this can mount on here. And this this way is closer to the.
very exciting stuff here. Check to make sure it's still. I can slam it. I'm pretty happy. All right, I'll be back in a second and we'll be. All right, now I'm just going to run a bead around here and make it look nice, and I think we're done. Very happy with this. Good job. Latch it. <laughs> um, simple. The only hiccup was our little white water, white um, spacer, I guess. Other than that, we're good. Alright. So I run my bead. And you just apply a very thin bead on these things and just kind of run your finger around the edge to make it look pretty. And, you know, uh, silicone will set in, I think it's 24 hours. And then it's, uh, it forms like a, a harder outside shell but remains flexible. Anyway, we're good. We're happy. I like this.